Hey guys, it's Derica. Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little peacock for your wreath attachments. It is a mixture of no sew because we did use the foam board back here. And then this little guy here is actually sewn because I like the way he looked sewn better because I can make him fatter and poofier. And I just love his chubby little cheeks and his fat little belly. Um, when you know sew that, you can only go out so far before you you know, burst the seams. So um, that's why I chose to sew him. And also I don't like to make all of our attachments no sew. I mean, we all, some of, a lot of us like to sew and we enjoy it and we have fun with it. So this is not a difficult sewn item. Um, he's a lot of pieces and parts you gotta put together, but um, in the end, I think he looks way better if you sew him. So anyway. Um, I have some pieces prepped here already put together and then I have a little bin here where I've actually already completed like the matching pieces like all of these little things we'll make one together I just didn't want you guys to have to sit through me making all nine of them <laughs> so I did a little prep work just so you uh you know don't have to be bored and fast forward through all of that so first thing we're going to do is the little head it's two pieces of the darker blue felt. Now this blue felt is just a dark blue. Um, this one actually I got at, I think I got this one at Joann's. It's called Peacock Color, but you can use the dark blue with the aqua. You can kind of use any colors that you want. Honestly, you could do pinks and purples if you felt like it. So, um, you know, just find a combination of two colors that you like. That's all. Okay, so on the head here, we're going to sew all the way around. We're going to cut a little slit in the back to flip it around and stuff it. So let's go ahead and do that. that those were not lined up very well right up there at the top so I'm gonna have to go back and put a little stitch over this so I just reinforce it because I like to stuff them pretty <clears throat> excuse me pretty fat and felt can um, it can pull apart fairly easily if you put it under pressure. So I just like to kind of reinforce it. So now I'm going to take my scissors. I'm just do a little, make sure you don't go through both sides. Put a little hole in there and then snip it up about an inch, I guess. However, however big you need it to get your fingers in there to flip it around. Okay, and then just use your finger to kind of push out all of the, the little cheeks, the little side of the, the top of the head, and then grab some polyfill. Oops, I dropped all the polyfill. And like I said, I like to stuff them pretty fat. I like them to look full. I don't want them to look flat. Um, I hadn't tried this one as a no sew, but I liked this version so well that I just decided to go ahead and sew the little peacock body. So just st stuff it in there, get your fingers in there, push it into all the little corners. It can take quite a bit. I like to kind of overstuff these type of pieces. I do the same thing with the frog. I like to really make them, um, I like the stuffing to be really um, full inside. Okay, there we go. So this little head here, let me go ahead and squish it around to make sure you have everything right. It's going to be glued onto this, like that. So this is actually in two pieces. Because we're using this backboard to glue it on, we don't have to actually connect, we don't have to sew the head to the body. 
the body will be glued on, and then the head will be glued right on top of that. That is one of the advantages of doing a no sew with sewing kind of item. You can, you can glue it all together rather than having to make a more complicated pattern to get the head attached. Um, it's just, it just puts a whole nother element on there. And, uh, you know, with the hot glue, we can easily, easily, easily put that together. Okay. So now we have this little, the little beak piece. Uh oh, I think we're frozen. My screen is frozen. Okay, so now we have the little beak piece. The head is all stuffed and really cute looking. So we are going to sew all the way, oops, <laughs> sorry, all the way around the beak and we're gonna cut a little slit in the back to flip it around and stuff it. I want to make sure there aren't any little places that I missed. It all looks good. All right. So we're going to take our scissors and again, putting about a one inch slit in the back or however big you need. Just push it through. I cannot keep my hands on this little guy. I'm going to use my hemostats here, which if you have your hemostats, this, this uh, project, it may, it'll make it just a little bit easier for you to pull things through. And I'm just going around and getting all the little corners. There we go. Okay. So we're going to put some polyfill in here. If you want to make this a no sew, um, well, I mean, you can. You can just glue all, you can glue the two head pieces together and try to stuff it just a little bit. And then you can glue this little beak together and put maybe just a little cotton ball size bit of stuffing in there. I mean, it is possible to make it no sew. Like I said, I just thought it looked way cuter sewn. Sorry, if you hear the squealing in the background, that is Bella. She pretty much hasn't stopped doing that all afternoon. I just have to learn to ignore it. She just keeps going and going and nothing I do or say can stop her. It is just, it is a constant, um, constant thing with her right now. So I don't think it'll affect this video too badly, though the door is closed. So, all right. So I have it stuffed. I'm just going to squish it around. I like to get all the polyfill flattened. So I am going to, and it's not, I didn't sew it totally perfect. It's got a little wonkiness to it, but honestly, I think it's okay. It's going to go about right there. So I'm going to get my glue gun get it untangled. And I am just going to make sure all the polyfill is shoved inside of there. I use my little finger just to Get it in there. Get the old glue off of here. And I'm not going to go all the way to the edges. I'm mostly just going to focus on doing um, right around the hole. Just all, just because I don't want it to like ooze out around 
And when I push this down, it's going to, <laughs> well, I need strings. It's going to spread it around for me. So I just set it on there like that and I take my hand and I just smash it down. Okay, I have glue everywhere. Okay, so I'm just holding it just for a minute. You want it to, you want it to smash down and we want that glue to spread out and glue more of the surface there. If you have glue squirting out of the sides, you, I mean, you want to let, go ahead and let it dry and then just cut it off. Try not to uh, pull it off while it's still hot. Okay, so that is there. It's still a little warm, but it's not going anywhere. These are the little eyes that I sent with the pattern. Now guys, on my patterns, um, you'll want to print out this page. Make sure it's in plain letter type, which is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. You cannot print these on a six by four because it's gonna make them teeny, teeny, tiny. As you can see, these eyes are pretty big. They are one and a half inches tall by one inch wide. So on your settings on your printer, make sure that it's at 100% and make sure you're printing these eyes out on a letter paper size, which is eight and a half by 11, not a six by four. The six by four photo paper will not work for the, well, I mean, it would if I, if I initially did it on a sheet of six by four, but I don't, I do everything on eight and a half by 11, okay? So I'm going to glue this one on here. Again, you don't need a whole lot of glue. It's just a piece of paper. I'm gonna figure out where I want it. Right there looks good. And then these little eyelashes are those cheap little dollar store, Walmart, wherever you want to buy eyelashes. Just glue them to the back of this. Um, whatever, you don't even have to use eyelashes if you don't want to. I've just kind of got this thing for them when I do eyes. I love the look of cute little eyelashes. <laughs> okay, so just look at your face. Make sure your eyes line up. Don't, I mean, put, put it away from you. Look at it. Don't make, if the eyes don't line up, the entire thing is going to look wonky. <laughs> so make sure your eyes line up. Take the extra time. And if it doesn't, then remove it and, you know, reposition it as needed because if, if your eyes don't line up, that's the first thing people are going to notice on your attachment. Okay. All right. So I did not put these in the um, pattern because they're literally little tiny black pieces of felt. Now you can use, you can just draw these on. You don't have to use them at all, but basically they're the little nostrils. You can use a, just a little piece of black rope. You can use whatever whatever you want, just a little teeny tiny. I like the look of the little nostrils on there after I put them on the other one. So I'm gonna add them to this. This is just black felt that I cut into little tiny um, strips. So there, so it just gives his nose a little more dimension. Okay, so I have everything on there. So I'm gonna set the head aside so we can let all that cool off. Okay, so let's see. We're going to do a leg. Now, this leg I've already done. I sew all the way around it, I flip it around, and then I sew all the way around it again. It just gives it a, um, I don't know, like a almost like a duck foot in a way. It just gives it that little um, rim on the edge that I think is looks really cute when you're doing the little bird legs. So we will sew this. stuff this I mean I'm not gonna stuff this so I don't have to make sure everything is like perfectly aligned but I definitely want to 
make sure all the seams are covered. All right, now I think we learned this before with the frogs. Whenever you're pulling, whenever you're going to pull um, an item through that is wider than the entrance, you always want to go to the side. Don't grab the center and try to pull it because you basically make a roadblock for yourself or a bottleneck, whatever you want to call it. Once you pull the center, these two sides are going to get stuck. So whenever you're pulling something through that's wider than your actual um, exit, then you always want to start pulling from the side. And it comes through very easily when you do that. I'm going to, again, use the hemostats to push these out. Make sure all the little toes kind of come out of there. Make sure there's nothing uh, folded over. Flat. And then I am going to just sew over this again, right, right near the edge, just to make that little, it's just a decorative stitch really. Since we're not stuffing them, I think the stitch um, just looks better. Okay, so now we have both of our little legs done, and we have to have our, we have to do our legs and our wings first because they are going to be incorporated into the body before we flip it around. So there are our legs. Now here is the wing. Now I put this little decorative um, piece of tan just so it ties in with the leg color. I don't know, I just, I wanted the wing to have a little bit of definition. It's also the line that I put the sequins on. So um, what I've done here is I've taken that piece from the pattern I place sandwiched it between the two pieces of the blue and I'm just going to sew it in there. Oops. All the way in there. And that way when, when we flip it around it will be in there. around. I could tell right here on this corner. I can just kind of feel it when I haven't, I think I've lost one of the layers of felt. Um, it just, uh, it just behaves differently. Okay. So we have all the layers. My trash can is way the heck over there. If I can move it closer. There's no point in reaching. Okay, so now we have a cute little wing. We're going to flip it around. I'm going to get my hemostats again, and I'm going to push out just the little lumps and bumps that were in there, little feathers, I guess. And as you can see, the cream color is kind of straight up at the top. It's just coming out the top straight up here. Okay. Well, you want, you want one on each side, right? So you wouldn't want to do both of them like this because they're both going the same direction. That's basically a right hand wing. So you're going to flip this around and you're going to pull this over this way. It can go either way, but just before you glue the um, tan portion down, you want to make sure you have a left and a right, a right and a left. Okay, so, and also I do stuff the wing very like just the very tip of it. Um, I, I just, it's not much at all, just to give it a little bit of uh, poofiness. As you can see on the side of him, the wing is poofing out just a little bit, not a lot, but just enough that it, it separates it from the body. And I'm just kind of pushing it into all the little, um, 
area, all the little areas. But like, I'm not gonna do like this whole area with polyfill because we're gonna actually sew through that. The wing, you know, is going to go inside the body here. Okay, I'm gonna get to my hot glue. Oh, tangling everything. Sorry about that. And I'm just going to, I don't want to put a bunch of glue at this end because I'll have to sew through it. So I'm just going to put just a, just a line of glue and then I'm just going to hold it down. Just like that. You just basically want to hold it, you know, so it's easier to work with later. That one. I haven't glued this one yet, so. There we go. And we're just holding it down. It does, I mean, it's sewn in there. All we want to do is keep that flap down, basically. So we have two opposite wings like that. Okay, so this is where things get a little tricky because we're going to get all of that inside of here plus the neck piece. <laughs> so I have the front and back of the body and this little neck piece. Um, I only did this because I really liked the look of the little, you know, scallops here and then the little gems. I thought it was cute. So we're going to go with it. So that is going to go on there like that. However you can get it. And then our little wings. We're going to go um, with the I mean, you want to it, initially when it, when we flip it around, you want this to be the front of the bird, and you want the actually this wing's going to go this way because I'm sorry, I'm going backwards because this is different. See how it curls around the bird? So you want this um, tan piece to be on the back side so that when we flip it around, it will curl around like this. Okay, so when I'm when it. When it comes out, it'll be like that, but we have to put it inside of here because we want to sew all this together. I know it's confusing. You have to visualize it in your head, and sometimes you have to actually physically pin it and or sew it or do something like a basting sew just to visualize how you get all this. Oops, we're going to move those up for a second because these are flat. So I want to put the little feet in here too. We have one foot in here, and we have one foot in here. Just like that. And they're flat, so they can lay down really easy. Just make sure they're nowhere near the edges. I kind of have them tilted inside just a little bit, like that. And then we're gonna put the puffy little wings on top. So we are making this all together, and it's all inside of the body of this peacock. So there and there. Okay. Just like that. And then I'm going to take the top piece, which would essentially be the back piece, and I'm going to twirl it around. I'm going to I'm going to put a pin up here to kind of keep things from moving around. And then, like we've done before, we are just going to sandwich these things together. Make sure nothing moves around that side. Um, just kind of get things in so that, oops, I don't want to lose the legs. So I'm just going to pin where each wing should be. And go to the bottom down here um, and pin each leg like this. Like that. So now when we start sewing, nothing should really move around or, you know, so. I'm recording. No. Hey. Hey, but that door is closed. I'm recording. You're sewing. Hey. I'm recording. Come here, guys. Sewing. You don't want to sound. No, I don't want anything right now. Hey. Uh, hey. Never mind. Come on. God. 
Okay, so we've sewn all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead, check both sides. It's really, it's around these arms especially, there's all, it seems like it always shifts just a little bit. So I'm gonna reinforce those anyway. legs are sewn in, our arms are sewn in, the neck piece is sewn. Everything is inside of here. We got to flip this sucker around. Okay, this is, I mean, it's not terribly difficult, but it definitely takes a little bit of time. So what I want to do is grab this wing first, a wing on the side first. I'm going to pull up. I mean, it might be easier just to use my fingers because when you grab a wing, you're ultimately going to try to, it's probably going to try to grab a leg. So there's one wing poking through. I'm gonna go ahead over here. And I'm going to just pull this other one through. It takes some finagling, guys. This is not something you can do quickly. Um, try not to pull too hard. You don't wanna rip any seams or anything like that. Okay, so I have a foot coming through now. <laughs> which is fine because I have both tips of each of the wings coming through and I have one foot coming through. So we're just going to keep working that um, until I see the tip of the other one. And then we'll just flip it through. There's the other leg. So anyway, so now we have... cute little fat body. The wings were already stuffed a little bit. They are going to be glued around this way like that. So you can see the tan is on the front. This will glue down just a little bit, you know, just to hold it in place. And then of course the legs are sewn in there. So we're not doing anything with the legs, but first we need to stuff this guy before we start gluing anything down. So we want it to be um, good and now, oh, also, really quickly, if for whatever reason you sew it and you do that and your tan part is on the front, so when you bring them around, your tan part is hidden, guys, you can take this neck piece and just flip it around. I should have told you guys that in the beginning, but it's easier to see it that way. So if you get it all together and you realize, oops, uh-oh, I don't, this isn't sewn right there. And you realize, oh no, I put the wings in backwards. It's totally okay, because you can flip this around. I am going, this top part of this neck up here is going to be hidden by the head, but I do have just a small little place where the felt pulled through. And I'm just gonna glue it, because this up here will 100% be hidden. So I can just, I can fix that with glue. I don't have to flip it all back around again. Okay, so now we will stuff this big fat body. Now, if you want to do this no sew, basically you would just glue your wings and your feet and sandwich them between the body pieces, I guess, or behind it, one or the other, whatever you feel looks best. And then you would just glue the neck piece onto that. I mean, really, that's all you can do to make it a no sew. Um, probably will look okay. You're just not going to be able to stuff it white as much, but that's okay. I mean, if that's, if that's the look that you're okay with, then go right ahead. You guys know there's some items I make that I really like um, sewn and some I really like them no sewed. Okay, so I'm not putting, I'm going to stop with the polyfill basically right where the neck starts to get really narrow right here. So, because that's where the head is going to be glued down. Okay. And the way I'm going to keep that polyfill down there and not in my way is to glue it. So I'm just going to take my glue gun and I'm going to go in, I don't know, just do three or four little lines inside of there and then push down. Hot 
glue all over everything. So that basically just flattened my little end there. And I'm going to go back. I like to make sure the end is kind of closed up here as well. So that it all lays flat. Okay. Now, if you have any clips or anything, I did not bring mine with me. Let me see. Maybe I did. No, there's none in my drawer. I think last time I thought about bringing them. So what we're going to do, if you have a clip, it can be a chip clip or whatever, you want to put some glue on the inside of this wing and you're going to glue it to the body. And you're going to have to hold it if you don't have any clips or anything. Um, I think I've told you guys before, sometimes I'll just like put it under my leg and just kind of sit on it just so that it keeps the pressure on it and I can still use my hands. So I might sound silly, but you know, so you, you use what you have, right? And right now I don't have my clips and normally I would use a chip clip or something on each side. It would hold it for me while I could still use my hands on things. So yeah, I'm gonna just set it under my leg because I don't want it popping up on my chair here. Just like sitting on a little pillow, not gonna hurt anything. Okay, so another thing we have here, these, this is what I use for the top of the head. It's just fun and it's cute. Um, I like, it's just a pipe cleaner. This one is a glittered pipe cleaner, you can see. You can just use regular blue if you want to. And I, I just line them up. I'm just gonna go ahead and do these because I want them to cool off. And now these are too long, but I'm just gonna go ahead and twist them all, twist about an inch at the bottom. This is one pipe cleaner. I cut it in three pieces, so they're four inches each. You probably don't need them that long. This, is, this up here is the only part that's gonna stick out of the head, right? So just uh, twist it around. And then what I do, I'm gonna put a dot of hot glue on each one end of one of these, not too much, because it's, it's just a styrofoam ball. You know, you don't need a whole lot of glue. That one, that one, and that one. And then I'm just gonna put that aside and let it cool. I could cut some of that off, but really it's not necessary because I'm gonna shove it down inside the head. So then I'm going to make this last one of these so I can show you how I did this. Guys, this is kind of self-explanatory here. Ah, I don't know what I keep getting hung up. Oh, okay. Every time I grab the glue gun, it's hung up here. Okay, so you have the um, whatever color scheme you're using. This is the dark blue. Take your middle color, which mine is yellow. Kind of throw some glue on the back. Try to center it the best you can. All right, do the same thing with your next little color. And if you choose to use a gem on it or whatever, you can get creative with this. I have these, I have these little blue gems. Like I said, they come in canisters with like 50 other sizes, shapes, and colors. So I'm not really sure where else to get this exact gemstone. They may have a teardrop at Hobby Lobby. Um, I just haven't looked into it yet. Um, this is just, I only, I mean, each canister comes with like 10 of each size and color. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to have enough to make a bunch of them. All right. So now just put a line of glue, start it right around there. Grab your sequence. Just kind of lay them on there going around the curve don't mess with them don't touch them remember they have a hole in them you're going to end up with glue strings everywhere you just want to tap it until the glue is cooled off just a little bit to where you're not going to get a million glue strings and it's just going to ruin the look of it you don't want glue ooking through those little holes so i'm just curling curling it around tapping it i'll move it to make it rounded kind of make it follow the shape of this piece that we're working with. A little bit more. Grab it again. Set it on there. Oops. And then just, I try to move my sequins around to make them follow the shape. If you have a blunt straight edge, 
doesn't look as pretty, doesn't look as nice. So, you know, spend the time while the glue is still warm and pliable and you can kind of move things around. Okay, so I would just hold it and just kind of push them out where I need them to go. Now, of course, I can touch this side now because it has cooled off completely and then just kind of tap it. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to try just to cut the string and not cut the actual sequin. You have to go in at an angle. And then what I do, just put an extra little bit of glue back here. Oops. So now we have all of those. I'm going to take the body out from under my leg because I'm sure it is plenty, plenty stuck by now. And if you notice, it's not down all the way. You can always add more glue if you need to. Oh no. Man, I thought I had everything. You know what? I swear I make these things and I think I have everything. I forgot the little round gems that you put on here. Lord, I really thought I had my stuff together tonight. It is, I'm going to forget something no matter what, right? I mean, <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do, I'm going to forget something. And I even had the list in front of me. Holy moly. Okay. All right, guys. I forgot the gems on here and I forgot the stinking fur, the feather boa. Yeah. Sheesh. Okay. We're going to glue that down. And then I have two little pieces that I've cut. You guys are just going to have to cut your sequins to the sizes that you need for whatever you're making. So I put on the pattern, I put about 10 feet worth of these sequins. So, I mean, you may need less, you may need more. I don't know how much you're using. So, uh, you just have to decide how much you're going to need and you know always buy just a little bit extra all right so i'm putting a line of sequins on this division between the tan and the blue i just thought it looked pretty on the wings and it's way too long and it's hanging over but we're going to trim it once it cools off a little bit can't believe I forgot those. My good, you know, I bet they're literally sitting right on my desk in a pile that I just didn't grab. <laughs> that of all the things I needed and then I just didn't grab them. Okay, so again, I'm gonna try just to cut the string and not necessarily cut the sequin. You can't, I, you can cut the sequin in half and then just go back and use your fingernail to kind of get it at the rest of it out of there. It's easier, um, but I do try to just go up under just cut the string if you can. So if you have small scissors, if you don't have small scissors, then that's about impossible. Okay, so I want to put another, just a bit of glue under the sequin here because it's sticking up kind of far. Hold it down and then at the back side, I'm going to put a little bit more glue on there before I cut this last sequin off. Just don't feel comfortable with it. There we go. Make sure it's all secure. These little sequins come out of the thread very easily. So, you know, you, you kind of have to... Um, that's why I always make the sequins a little bit bigger than what you need because you're going to have to cut some off and throw them away. There's just no way around it. Okay, so now we have cute little okay i'm gonna go run and grab the feathers and the gems because it's gonna drive me nuts not to finish this guy give me one minute guys
Hey, I am back. So sorry about that. I'm never going to make a video where I actually have everything ready. I don't think it's going to happen. I really don't. So, Lord. Okay. So, I, before I put these on, though, I want to put, I want to do the back side, um, the board, just because um, I don't want to, I don't want to mess with it. So, guys, your board, your foam board. Remember, put your pipe cleaners in. You can do them horizontally or vertically or however you want them in there. Whatever, however you're going to attach it to your wreath. That's how. Um, and you have this big old piece. And you guys notice on the outside piece, let me see if I can scoot over here just a minute so I can lay this flat. I'll move him over here. Yes. This little head over there. There we go. So this way we can just lay him flat. But like you see on the outside fabric piece, I didn't go real, like, I mean, you honestly could just do a giant square. You could just do a big oval. You're gonna cut this and work it in between each one of these little things. So you don't have to be totally precise with the outside fabric piece. Now you want the foam board. That's what's important. So, um, we are not going to stuff this, so it makes it just a little bit easier. Um, I just, I didn't feel like it needed to be stuffed. In fact, it looked kind of awkward. We need a glue stick. It looked kind of awkward when I stuffed it. It just, if, if we were sewing it, I could see stuffing it, of course. Since we're not sewing it, oh, good Lord. This is pretty big, too. Like, and I'm literally... All I want to do is just hold this in place to keep it from sliding around on me. So I'm just putting glue a little bit of everywhere, just like that. And that's because we're not stuffing it. We can glue the front of it. All right. So now it's, <laughs> I need like an extra two feet of table here. So. why the animals always get so restless every single time I come in here I feel like I feel like the dogs the birds everything just kind of go a little crazy on me okay so you are going to have to cut in each and every single one of these in order to get them to curve around these pieces I don't recommend going all the way I'm only, I'm going I'm leaving probably at least a half an inch um, And then I like to cut one extra this way, like just so I can pull it. So just one little slit on each side. It gives you a little more um, leverage to make it fit around the pieces that you want them to fit around. I mean, it's not going anywhere. You've already glued the thing to the front. No big deal. Okay. Just like that. So, now with felt, of course, you have room to stretch it. I always tell people. So, since I've already glued, glued the bottom piece down here, I'm going to start up here. Um, that way I, you always want to go diagonally from each other. So I'm going to take the little, let's see if we can see this. Sorry about that guys. I'm going to take this little strip that I had made and I'm going to pull it over and I'm going to use my fingers to really push it in there. Okay. And on the other side, I'm going to take it and I'm going to pull it over. And what you're looking for, you don't want a big gap in the corners right here. You kind of want to be able to pull it kind of tight right there. And then, alrighty. And then I'm going to take the rest of this up around this top area and we're just going to, we're going to tug it. 
you get a little bit of stretch with the felt. So don't be afraid to put a little tug on it to make it really kind of tight and, and fit these little um, pieces well. You can cut all this bulky stuff off the back once it's cooled off. Like all of this extra stuff, you can just cut that right off. But you want to uh, give it a little tug. And then when you flip it over, you can see if there are no bubbles, no gaps, no anything. It is, it is really close and tight to that. And so then what I do, I just kind of get up under anything where it's not glued. Just uh, use your scissors. These scissors are not the best ones to use for this. And just kind of cut the stuff off. Make it, uh, I guess, neat, I guess you would say. Yeah, I mean... If you're going to cover the back, you definitely want to cut this stuff off, but it just looks neater when you see how I just cut all that off and now it's, it's nice and flat. So, okay, so now I'm going to do one of these bottom ones. So we'll just do this one. Same thing all the way around. It's going to take you a little while to do all these. Um, you don't really need to cut a slit in this bottom one because I cut it curved here. Um, unless I feel like it's really tugging on it and it needs to be curved. But I'm just going to grab it and just put some more glue on that one. Okay, grab it and hold it a little bit. And then there, just, just tug on it. Um, like I said, felt, especially when you add the hot glue to it, it becomes very um, moldable, I guess is the word. And it will mold around. See how the end is so so nice and just there's no gaps, there's no bubbles or anything. It molds really nicely. So now we'll do this side. I'm just gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna grab the little snip that I made and kind of pull that. And what I'm doing with that little snip is just keeping it from bulk from gapping in that uh, little in the corner there, the inside corner. And then just start pulling it and make sure it's all hitting the glue all the way around like that. Let it cool a little and then you can go back and cut all this extra mess off. one's done and it's nice and flat and then you just kind of keep doing the exact same thing all the way around now this one I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a top one up here and I just like putting glue all around the edges pull that one pull the little tabs like that and then just start pulling the top one the top part all the way around and use your fingers to make sure it's um, all these edges are getting in that glue. I'm gonna put a little more glue on this one. Make sure that stays down there. Okay. And we'll do this one. We'll do this one down here. This way. And I'm just putting glue like basically all around the edge. You don't have to be neat about it. Hold that up. that one and then just kind of start pulling all the way around the edges same thing on each one and anywhere that you notice it's not sticking just add a little more glue you just you want a good quarter of an inch around the edge that is glued down well like that I don't think the rest of these are really going to slide too much. It's really more important um, to the first few that you do to make sure that you uh, get the proper tension on each so that you don't pull it too far one way or the other. So I think you can kind of just go through and do all of these. Okay. 
all over my fingers. Hold all that down. Now guys, in the pattern, I just put that you need one piece of this fabric. Now, whether you choose to use felt or whether you choose to use the peacock fabric, or any other type of fabric, it's all done exactly the same way. But if you are going to cover your back, then you need to cut two of them, obviously. You can't, I mean, you're gonna need two pieces. So be sure to cut it, um, you know, when you're cutting the other one, it's just easier. Down here. all these little edges up it's not going to be perfect it's never going to be perfect but it just looks neater if you cut all these big globs of fabric off cut these scissors these scissors are not made for this holy moly <laughs> okay, we will make them work and just Looks like we're good. Okay. And everything looks nice and even and flat. Get all the fuzzballs off of here. All right. So, guys, when I made this one, I can't really see them because I cut them off. But I did put string between each one of these. I, I just basically started in the middle and I ran a string around each one of these and glued it to the back side. But I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I liked it better without the string, but that is something else you can add here. If you want to add like a turquoise or something or teal colored like string around it. When you look at pictures of peacocks, all the feathers usually have lines. I just, I didn't like it, but that is another option for you to do if you choose to. Those are all things you can do if you want to. All right, so now we're gonna put these on before we glue our um, main body on so and there's nothing more to this that's why I make I make them before I put it on the board because now they're just ready to stick on here and it's kind of a little bit low here but just start gluing them on that's they're they're already made they're ready to go Now we have doggos at the door. All right. I'm not, my other desk is so much higher, so I can really see what I'm doing. I feel like, I feel like a midget sitting here. It's like a very small person. I'm 
I'm just going to glue each one of these down. Of course, you want to watch your placement. You don't want them, you want to try to keep them an equal distance apart. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but you don't want any of them like, you don't want one touching and the next one having a big gap, you know? So just be aware of your placement. Like if this one has a big gap here and if this one was touching here, it would just look like they were off centered. So um, just uh, take the extra time to uh, make sure you get them as close to equal distance apart as possible. Like this one, this bottom one down here, I had an issue with this one on the other one too. It just, this one did kind of gap just a little bit overlap, but it's at the bottom, so I was okay with it. If I was standing up, I could probably eyeball this much easier. Just keep going all the way around. tons of glue, just enough to hold it on there. Okay. Yep. There is our pretty feathers. So now, of course, if I had my bigger glue gun in here, I would use it. <clears throat> I mean, this is, this is a lot of gluing for this little, little bitty glue gun, but I don't have it in here. So, and I made the pattern to where the body Basically, should be lined up with the bottom of the feathers here, so just the legs dangle. That's how you know you kind of have it in the right place. So I am just going to go as quickly as possible and try to get as much glue on this thing before it all starts to cool off because this glue gun is pretty small for this kind of thing. All right, it should still hold though. We shouldn't have an issue with it holding. So find your center. Place it on there and then just hold it down. And make sure you glue down the neck too, because that's where the head's got to attach to. And this, you just you just have to hold this. There's really no way to clip this, and I certainly wouldn't sit on it because then you would you would twerk you tweak the board, which you can still use it with the board bent or kind of mushed. It's not going to hurt anything, but really, but uh. I mean, it still kind of looks the same. All right, so make sure you're going to put the head on, but you want to make sure all this polyfill is inside of here, hidden away. Make sure all the little fuzzies are off of it. And again, we're going to go, go a little crazy with the hot glue here. And just, you don't want to go all the way, all the way to the edges because you don't want it ooking out. You can always add a little more if you feel like it's uh, lifting up in a ways but you cannot get rid of it once it starts bubbling out. So just put it like that, find your center and glue it on. And yet you're probably, you're gonna glue it onto some of these feathers and all the pretty things you did, but um, that's just the way the pattern was done. So now we're gonna hold this one on. I know it takes a while. It takes a while to get the glue. That you can always go back and add a little more glue, especially right here in the neckline if you feel it needs it. But uh, for the most part, it shouldn't really go anywhere. Okay, so there he is. So now we're going to take our little, uh, I don't know what you call that, his little head thing. And oh, whoa, we have some major glue strings on this side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole just big enough for these pipe cleaners to fit through on the top of this head. 
I'll do a little brain surgery here. And basically my scissors just went inside. I'm gonna kind of use my scissors to make the hole big and round so that when I stick that in there, I don't have any resistance. And then we're gonna glue this thing. It's gonna go into the polyfill, but that's okay. You can cut the shorter if you want, but I just leave it. Take the hole that you just made, shove this in there, and some of the glue is going to come out. It's kind of inevitable. Just shove it in there. And I just hold it a minute to let that glue set around. I have to do it down here, guys, sorry. I would show you, but then I can't hold it. I shove the little balls in there, you know, as far as really as all the way to where I want it to go. And then I just kind of hold it here like that. And then you have this cute little, cute little balls up on his head like that. And now we will grab our little gems. I think we needed six, six or something. Grab our little gems. I've already put just a little bit of glue underneath each one of these little scallops here so that we have, um, so it won't, it won't pull up. So you just start going around, add your little gems. And again, I'm so low in this chair, I can't see what I'm doing here. You kind of want to make sure they're in a straight line. It's about impossible for me to do unless I stand up here. Kind of. Little, my little scallops aren't really even, so this isn't super even, but it's okay. And just glue the little rhinestones on, gemstones, whatever you call them. So yeah, I needed six of those. Those are on there. And then this is optional. I thought it was cute, but um, I'm just going to take like a little three inch piece of this um, feather bow because I have this already for my other peacocks. Now, guys, I mean, it's up to you if you want to go out and buy a feather bow. Not mandatory, but. Uh, I did not put it in the pattern because I wasn't sure, but you've seen my finished one. And if you want the feather boa, then I'm really, I mean, I order this stuff in bulk from a wholesale supplier. I don't get it locally or you know, at a store. So I can't really tell you if Hobby Lobby is going to have this color or something similar. So, and then I'll just put a line of this right along the neck here. And I put this little feathers. I just kind of tuck it up in there. And it, it kind of hides that um, place where the neck meets the body. So it kind of looks like that. Oops, can you see it up there in the camera? See, I just the little feathers in there. You don't have to do that. It's just I have them, so I might as well use them, right? <laughs> so that is it, guys. That is our cute little peacock. I'd have to lint roll him and get all of these glue strings off because they'll drive me crazy. And uh, Otis, hey, hey, stop, honey. Sorry, my cat was scratching on the door. And uh, he's ready to go. He's ready to go. Now it's up to you if you want to finish the back or not. This one has a finished back, and this one does not. So, you know, that's 100% up to you if you want to cut that extra. But you can see, very cute. And hopefully they'll look really good in a wreath because all this will just scream out at you you know the it's all this uh all these little fake feather looking things with all the bling on it will just really be bright and uh, stand out in your wreath so i hope you guys enjoy this one i can't wait to see your creations and your color combinations and all of that so um yeah don't be afraid to post them because i really like to see them <laughs> anyway thanks guys you have a good night